Hey friends, in this next entry into the How to Write T-SQL Like a Pro series, we're gonna be talking about temporary tables and using them to improve query performance. Let's get to it. Hello, my name is Austin Leibel and I am a trainer at Pragmatic Works and we do training on all sorts of different Microsoft products like SQL, like the Power Platform, like Azure. Today, we are going to be continuing our introduction to how to write T-SQL like a pro series by talking about temporary tables. A temporary table is also known as a temp table, is a table that is created temporarily in a database for a specific session or transaction. They can be used to perform CRUD, create, read, update, delete operations. They can be used with joins and some other operations like the persistent database tables. It is similar to a regular table in a SQL database, but it is only available for the duration of the session or transaction and is automatically dropped when the session or transaction is ended. Temporary tables are commonly used to store intermediate results during complex queries as they can help reduce the amount of data that needs to be processed and can make query runs ultimately more efficiently. They can also be used to store data that is specific to a particular user or session, such as a user preferences or search parameters. And there are actually two different types of temp tables. There are local temp tables and global temp tables. Local temp tables are only available within the session in which they are created. Global temp tables are available in all sessions, but are dropped when the creating session ends. When creating temp tables, it is important to follow a few best practices to ensure they are used effectively. This includes things like choosing the appropriate column data types and sizes to avoid excessive memory usage, ensuring that temp tables are properly indexed to improve query performance, and dropping temp tables as soon as they are no longer needed to free up some memory on the database. Temp tables can be compared to other SQL queries with subqueries and common table expressions. Subqueries are similar to temp tables in that they can be used to store intermediate results, but are not created as physical tables and are only available within the query in which they are used. CTEs have a very similar concept as well, where you can go through, you can store intermediate results, but they're only available in that query. They're not stored in the database. In general, temp tables are a powerful tool for managing, optimizing complex queries in SQL, and when used appropriately, they can significantly improve query performance and reduce the amount of data that is needs to be processed. However, they should be used judiciously and with care to ensure that they don't negatively impact database performance or cause issues with data integrity. So let's get to a few examples of how to utilize temp tables inside of a SQL database. I'll see you over in SQL Server Management Studio where we're going to work again with the Adventure Works database. All right, so I am inside of my SQL Server Management Studio, and what I want to do to start with is show the basics of how to work with and create a temp table. So I'm just going to create a basic temporary table called name. So I'm going to use a very similar SQL operation to create a actual table, but instead of giving this table a name like names or something like that, I'm going to just call it names with this hashtag or pound symbol in front of that. That is how we are going to specify that this is going to be a local temp table. Two hashtags or again, pound signs, depending on your mileage, uh, can be used to create a global temp table. Now for this temp table, I'm going to go through and specify a few of the different columns that I want to be exist on it. So I'm going to create multiple columns, one called business entity ID, and I'm going to specify that that is going to be an integer data type. I'm also going to create a column called the first name that's going to be a in varcar. 50, again, we do want to limit the size of our string length of our columns so we don't take up too much memory on our database. Now we also can go through and have a last name. Again, we'll use the invar car 50, and then we're gonna wrap this up with a final closing parenthesis, and that's going to create three different columns on a new table called names. I'm gonna go ahead, execute this, command completed successfully. Let's go and check out what our new table looks like. So I'm going to select star 
from names. And you see, I have here IntelliSense, it is signified as a temporary table on my database. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. And we can see that there is a temporary table that has been created. There are currently no values inside of our three columns. So we can go through and we can insert some values into this temporary table. Now, in order to drop a temporary table, I can go through and just use the normal syntax to drop a table, but we're just gonna use that pound sign again. So I would say drop table names, it no longer is available. So if I go through and now run this again, we can see there is not an object that exists. So that's a way to drop that for ourselves, but we'll recreate it really quickly, get rid of this. We are going to want to insert some values into that table. So again, a temporary table does support CRUD operations. So we're going to actually use an insert into uh, signifier to go through and actually insert some records. So I'm gonna use insert into this names temporary table where I am gonna to need to specify the different columns in this syntax here to actually create and insert values into this. And I'm gonna insert some hard coded values to start with. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna insert a value one of John, and then we're gonna have the last name be Smith. All right, that can go through and it can insert one value into our temporary table. One row is affected. Now, when I go through and execute this select star from names, I can see I have a new value that has been added into this. Now, this can be used for a variety of reasons. We can go through and create some hard-coded data like I did here, but there's also some other awesome capabilities that we have the ability to work with. So I'm gonna go through, remove my results here, come down a little bit to give myself some room, and then I'm gonna create a new temporary table from a SQL statement I go through and populate. I'm going to write a traditional SQL statement. So I'm going to say select from this sales.sales .sales order detail table. I'm going to go through and pull over a few columns from that table. I'll pull over sales order ID. I'll also pull over the product ID and I'll also pull over the order quantity. So this can give us a limited, a defined view of what exists on this table. Again, I can just go and look and see what exactly is on this table to start with. But let's say I have some requests come in. I have requests come in from one of my uh, stakeholders. They say, hey, Austin, we need to see all of the results of our company. We need to see how well we've been doing on our sales. I wanna see all of the products that we have not sold or the products that have sold greater than five uh, it, items on that database. So we wanna go through, we wanna see those results. Now you might remember this, this is a similar query that we used to work with a common table expression or CTE in a previous video in this series. So we're gonna do the same thing this time with a temporary table. Again, just giving you more tools in your tool belt. So again, what we would need to do here for this is say where the order quantity is greater than five. Again, we have about 100, 120, 12,000. Yeah, we have a lot of records coming there. Let's go look and see how many records we have now. I'll move myself out of the way so y'all can see as well. Uh, we have the ability to have 10,000 records now on this result. Now, what I can actually do with this result right here, from this select statement, I can select into a new table. This is a awesome, very powerful tool when working inside of SQL. So I'm going to put in between my select and my from an into statement. And I'm gonna put a temporary table here called orders over five. So this is going to go through, create that SQL result I just had and put it into this temporary table here. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute that now. We can see that quickly, 10,000 rows were just inserted into this temporary table that only exists during the duration of this window. Now I can go through, I can join this to my production.product table, which has a list of all of my products on it, and I can go through and get that result back for my stakeholder. So in order to do that, what I would need to do is select from production.product and I'll a alias this as P. We're still gonna be doing a traditional join here. So I'll go and pull over P.productID and then I will actually go in and do a left join. I just wanna see all the results from the left side of my table here. I'll reference this orders over five as O and I will do it on the idea that the product ID from the product table is going to equal to the product ID from the orders over five table. Now I'll also go through and I'll pull over the name of my product as well. And I'll also pull over the order quantity. So previously, again, we had, let's see, let's remove this uh, 
into right here. Let's go through and see how many results we had on this one. We had 10,225 results. When I go through and join this to that now, I bring back another 250 results or so. So again, we are seeing all of the order quantities that have a order quantity greater than five, as well as all the products that have not been sold as well, where there is a null inside of our results. Hopefully this has been a great introduction into temporary tables and gives you some ideas of how you can go through and utilize this in your own environment. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.